Hi, I'm Greg Morris, and I've got a secret. From Hollywood, the show that reveals all, I've got a secret. And now let's meet the star of I've got a secret, Steve Allen. Hi, Greg. There we are. I see no reason for that much applause this early in the evening. I mean, it may go the other way. You know, anyway, hello there and welcome to the new I've Got a Secret. And tonight's new panelists are comedian Pat Carroll and the very funny Artie Johnson. That's an order, Artie. <laughs> and Broadway and television actress Anita Gillette. And our man with the glib ad lib, Mr. Richard Dawson. There's a panel for you. Now that you've met our panel, we are sure you'll be equally interested in meeting our first contestants. They're right behind the great wall here. Let's see if we can find them. Yep, there they are. Three very pretty young ladies, as you needn't be told. Uh, may I ask your names, please? My name's Trudy Galiner. My name's Katie Carter. My name is Joyce Collins. Yeah. Panel, these uh, ladies all have something in common, and if you'll whisper your secret to me, girls, we'll let the home audience know what it is. Ah. <laughs> now, uh, at this point, you know, I think no matter how long there are quiz and game and panel shows on the air, they've been on the air now for about 25 years, probably every so often somebody thinks they're not on the up and up. Well, obviously they are. We couldn't get away with it the other way. But uh, this is one of those kind of awkward and dramatic moments where we're letting you in behind the scenes. It just so happens that a few minutes ago before the show, due to a little technical mistake, uh, the two ladies on the panel heard a discussion backstage, so they already know what the secret is. Therefore, they are automatically naturally disqualified. <laughs> Grand troopers that they are. You are a grand trooper, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Certainly, you both are. So they're going to, in a kind of sense, sit this game out. But if you feel like saying anything, go right ahead, gals, you know. And therefore, right. the gentlemen, <laughs> Artie and Richard, will have to take care of the questioning. Uh -oh. So we'll start the questioning with Richard Dawson. Uh, ladies, it's nice to see you. Are you sisters? No. <laughs> Good show, why not? They all look so tranquil, they could be, and I thought that. Uh, the thing that you all have in common, ladies, uh, would other ladies in our audience have this in common? A couple. Well, here, if they did, it wouldn't help you much. Here it's comes a message one from the front here. <laughs> yes, and your name is? Hi, Jono Sikowski. Sikowski, nice to have you here, Miss Sikowski. Just help yourself to yeah. our platform here. Whoop. She also... Uh, leave too. What say? Nothing. I thought Dick could leave too. I'll answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Artie will handle it all from here on. She obviously shares the same secret. All right. Are you members of a contest of some kind? No. Very good start, Richard. Did uh, you hear that buzzer? <laughs> here comes another visitor. What is your name? They're turning them out faster than I can get to them. <laughs> I'm sorry, gentlemen. What was your name? Jill Laird. Jill Laird. With a cute little voice. Jill Laird. She has the same secret, of course. Miss Laird does. Now, Artie, it's up to you to f do the questioning here. Uh, are there more of you? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. They may come in for a long time. Uh, uh, ha uh, is it, uh, have you all, you have one thing in common, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it something that you all do? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it something you do with your hands? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> their, <laughs> their hands are occasionally involved, and so, for that matter, are those of this gentleman whose name is... George Goiner. Nice to meet you, George. He also, again, shares the same secret. Just make yourself comfortable there, George, and go right ahead, Richard. Richard? Or, or well, uh, Artie. Well, it's back I, and forth, anyway. I, I'm, I, I'm disenchanted with your last entry, I must say that. <laughs> I, I would rather go back to the original five. Who needs him? Um, is it, it's something you, you do, do, do you do it to people? Oh. <laughs> they don't do it to anyone, uh, in the sense that you mean, no. Speak for yourself, Steve. Occasionally. <laughs> Obviously, they do something. Somebody up here does something to Anita. In a sense. And your name is? Theodosia Jones. Nice to have you with us, Miss Jones. Make yourself at home. And of course, she shares the same secret. Gentlemen. Yes. Is the secret, uh, ladies, the fact that the lady in the front is just a little more masculine than the average? <laughs> now, put that 
<laughs> As if so, I'll choose bachelor number three. <laughs> uh, do you belong to... Uh, do you all work together? No. Yes and no. There is a sense, though, in which that might help you to think that. And what is your name? Janet Dunn. Nice to meet you, Janet. Whatever you've done, just make yourself... Uh, <laughs> talking about and another question all right. could i and when you're doing the job that you're all together sometimes and sometimes you're not could i meet you in this profession you would be very likely to yeah <laughs> <laughs> would it be a <laughs> that's what do with mental have... help right <laughs> <laughs> oh another one i think if we sit here long enough they, they'll outnumber us and we don't have to ask any more questions right. they'll find out i know what they are they're imitating rabbits <laughs> <laughs> And this young lady's name, just for the record, is? Karen Myrdal. Karen Myrdal. Nice to have you with us, Miss Myrdal. Gentlemen. Have, have you all, oh, do you all work together? Have you all worked together for a long time? I, by long time, I mean more than just meeting each other casually on the street and sort of getting If they on a had, bus. it would be irrelevant. It would be irrelevant. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't forget it, because irrelevant never forgets. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> well, it was cute but tough, panel. The secret is that you are looking here at a bunch of deputy sheriffs. <laughs> deputy sheriffs. Yes, Richard? Raise your other hand. Uh, officers, if I've said anything to offend you, I, I'd like to apologize. Two of the uh, deputy sheriffs, in fact, are married uh, to each other. Uh, this gentleman's name is Mr. Galener. Right. And you, of course, are? Trudy Galiner. Trudy Galiner. And I bet you yeah. thought you'd never, I never expected to fall in love with another deputy, huh? Well, it was either marry or go to jail. I... <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, uh, jail. No. I've heard of I Got a Secret, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, how long have you been married? Um, just about seven years. Well, that's wonderful. Do you ever, seriously, now work together? No. Mm -hmm. No, I work at a substation, and Trudy works at the women's jail. I see. We won't work together. Too many guys are I see. Mad. Ah. Well, <laughs> deputies, you've certainly arrested our attentions this evening, and uh, may all your pinches be friendly Steve, ones. Steve, can I ask, are these deputies from uh, Los Angeles County? or? Uh, yes, Los Angeles County. Hey, you know we have good-looking deputies in our... Oh, yeah. Oh, really? The very best. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. I've got a secret. We'll continue in just one minute. Richard Dawson wants to remain around after the show. <laughs> <laughs> See if he can get frisked. Now then. The joke got a bigger laugh in the middle than it is at the end. Let's meet some more contestants here. For Pete's sake. Nice to have you folks with us. Make yourselves comfortable. We're going to refer to this uh, couple panel as uh, Mr. X and Miss Y. The reason, obviously, that you might recognize their names. We, we can't be sure. Oh, their secret the yeah, yeah. concerns something unique that they accomplished recently all by themselves. So, X and Y, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll let the audience know what you did. Panel, as I say, the secret concerns something unique they did uh, together, and we'll start the questioning with Anita. Oh, thank you, Steve. Um, Mr. It's Mr. X, right? Mm -hmm. Mr. X, uh, was this thing you did, was it written up in the, in the newspapers or written up in some sort of a publishing uh, thing? Was it published? Well, I guess so, yes. It, it was? Public attention uh, was paid to it. I see. Yeah. Was it uh, in some form, uh, what, in the broad area of, of say, sports? At all. Very, very broad. Very, very broad? Was it, would it be considered an experiment of some sort? Well, only if you're very kinky about it. Oh. <laughs> it could be considered some kind of an experiment, yes. It was when, not an ordinary thing. No. When you did this thing, did, did you use any kind of equipment? Oh, um, yes. Some. What? One down and three to go, Richard. All right. Uh, Mr. X and Miss Y. <laughs> Did you recently change your name from Mr. B? And <laughs> uh, probably not worth pursuing. Uh, no, could I ask you, 
Miss Y, do you help Mr. X in this jolly thing that he does? Oh, yes, I suppose so. I hope so. You do? I detect uh, an accent. Are you uh, Australian? No. Would you like to be? <laughs> <laughs> I have a kangaroo back there. Uh, are, but then you're not an American, are you? Or no. you may be now, but you weren't originally. Is no, that... I'm not an American. All righty. Now, you do us a... Did you do anything... Um, did you sail a boat together anywhere? No, we no. didn't sail. Would you like to sail? No. <laughs> <laughs> However, in all fairness, uh, we must tell you, you were on the right track there, Richard. Well, thank you. I have a ship. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Mr. X, uh, again, continuing the, the boat thing, if you didn't sail it, did you do something else with the boat? Well, we moved. In a boat. Did you row it? That's right. Mm -hmm. And you rowed it across one of the oceans, the Indian, the Atlantic, the Pacific, the, uh, the Ganges, one That's of the those. idea, yeah, across yeah. the Pacific Ocean. They not only rowed across the Pacific, but they went 8,000 miles in doing so, the hard way. Oh, you really went good. out of your way for a little while, too, if I recall. <laughs> yeah, the ocean isn't that wide. I guess how, how large was the boat? Uh, the boat was uh, 35 feet long, 5 feet beam, and... Uh, it was well, it's a luxury uh, liner, right? Well, so for the first 35 feet, they could walk. <laughs> <laughs> then the rowing started. <laughs> Did Miss Y also row? I think we can drop the Y and, and Z stuff now. It's John Fairfax and Sylvia Cook who are our distinguished ah. guests. <laughs> and we have some uh, motion picture film, which we're going to uh, show everyone right now, of their 35-foot uh, uh, craft, Britannia II, as they rowed from San Francisco to Australia. There they are at sea. How long did it take? Uh, 361 days Oof. altogether. Are you on the phone there, sir? What are you calling the office? What is that? That's radio telephone. Oh, radio telephone. Oh, radio telephone, yes. Of course. We kept, uh, we tried to keep in touch with uh, K Mine San Francisco, but uh, it only worked for the half uh, part of the journey. Washing? There's Sylvia washing her hair with uh -huh. seawater. Never see that in a television commercial. Yeah. <laughs> That's really remarkable. Yeah. Um, I understand that even though you, uh, you can't be called a sailor, that you nevertheless went through some really rough weather. What were the details? Well, oh, well, the details were it was rough and wet and frightening and miserable. Yeah. yeah we, well, enough of the good times. <laughs> what went wrong? <laughs> well, actually, in a boat as slow as that, our main problem was to keep our skin uh, from getting too soggy. And uh, we used lots of Vaseline and... Uh, Slipped out of the boat a lot. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> whose, whose idea was it? At Mine. Oh, John was it yours? Yes. The but, uh, she side. was a very, very good uh, crew member. Well, it was a remarkable feat. We're a little bit behind panel, so we, again, offer you our sincere congratulations and thank, thank you. you for joining us. We'll be right back. We'll be back with our guest star, Greg Morris, right after these messages. <laughs> or, on the other hand, let's meet tonight's guest star for Mission Impossible, Mr. Greg Morris. Here he is. Welcome. Welcome to I've Got a Secret, Greg. First of all, what is this GG business? Well, it stands for Greg's Gangsters. It's a charity basketball team that I organized last year with Sandy Koufax and Rudy LaRusso, and we used to play for charities in high schools. Terrific. And is there any school or... Uh, oh, there's the word the himself on there. That's what's on the back of there, himself. I see. I didn't know you had Irish blood. Yes, well, you see, I was the boss there, child. Ah. And I could put anything back there I wanted to. <laughs> see what you mean. Uh, Greg, seriously, he almost became a professional basketball player, didn't you? Yes, I did. I wanted to very badly, and the uh, circumstances and then I decided to get in this business and give it up. Where'd you play college ball? University of Iowa. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, our panel, as the audience here knows, and uh, now we can tell at home too, has been sent off stage to a soundproof room, Greg, so that you can explain your secret. You're, since they're not here, you don't have to whisper. What is it? I'm going to play basketball against an animal. That's right. <laughs> That's happened sometimes before, uh, <laughs> in a manner of speaking, but uh, right now it's going to be literal. We'll open the great wall here and see exactly who Greg's opponent is. And there he is, by golly. It's a trained seal, and a very cute one. 
Uh, well, they're all cute, I suppose. Uh, the seal is named Nipper, and he is representing the San Diego Zoo in this competition with uh, Greg and his group tonight. So uh, we want you to meet his... Cooler. <laughs> his coach is trainer Benny Kirkside. How do you do, Captain? Nice to have you with us. And here's how we play the game. It's very simple. Greg, you and your fishy friend here each have your own basket. Since you're a lot taller than he is, we gave you a taller taller basket, to be fair. And you'll simply take turns. You will go first, Greg, and Johnny Olson here will help us to return missing balls and keep score and that sort of thing. And I will officiate it, uh, hopefully, and we'll see how we're, we're all doing. Is that fair enough? That's fair. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the panel, I'm in tow, I've just been informed, uh, have been released from their soundproof room and they're now being uh, blindfolded, put into their chairs, and uh, in just a second or two, they're going to be uh, coming out on stage, prepared to go to work. Greg, I understand that this is uh, the seventh year for Mission Impossible? Seven years we've been there. Well, it's a fine show, and I bet it's going to be on seven more, at least. Okay, the, <laughs> the uh, team uh, people are ready to uh, go to work here, and I understand the panel is all prepared to go to work, too. So... Um, Panel, uh, our special guest, Greg Morris, is on stage with me, and he's got a terrible sore throat, as you can hear. <laughs> and uh, you may start uh, what's going on out here. And we'll start the questioning about all this with uh, Artie Johnson. Now the other... animals. Okay. They're animals here. Pardon? They're uh, animals. Two. Oh. They're animals? I didn't hear the uh, question, Artie. Uh, well, I hear a ball. But I hear a ball. I know what it is. I can hear a seal, and yes. uh, it's probably Greg's trained seal. No, it isn't. Uh... But it's an. It's Greg playing basketball with a seal. By oh, golly, you've got it. It was, of course, easy to tell that a seal was out here, but how you can tell that the basketball game was going on, we really can't tell. However, it was very quick thinking, and uh, I'll tell you what, since uh, since you've already figured out what the game is, we're going to let them finish out the game anyway. The first person, the first, listen to me, person, the first player that gets five points is the winner. It's Nipper's turn now. He still uh, caught it before it hit the ground, and it's now three to two, and now Greg shoots. Snipper's turn once again. Lay it in their nip. And... Ooh! There you go, Greg. Very close game. Three to two. Oh, and there's five points for the seal. And the seal is the winner. He took a lot more shots than Greg did, but even so. What the heck? Listen, since we... Uh, we got through the game. Never mind your Louis Armstrong impressions. <laughs> since we got through the game so fast, why don't you try your hand at it? Come on over here, uh, Richard, since you're first in line there to save a little time, why don't you shoot first? Anita, Artie, Pat, all of you, come on over and try a shot. Yeah, shoot up there. Something wrong with this rod. You have to stay. Seal lover, you know. Here goes Richard's one-hander. Isn't that delightful? Very good. Hey, hey, that's so now you're getting a seal. Now we need a prize. Very close. Very close. And now it's Pat's turn. Oh, look at oh. She actually hit the backboard and she gets a little piece of meat. Turn. Wait a minute. It's, it, it's Artie's turn. Artie, Artie's turn. Hey, dunks it. And he misses. That's funny. Not too many dunks are missed, but Artie, you did it with a great scar. Greg, thanks so much. We'll be seeing you on Mission Impossible. I'll be there. Thank you, Steve. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you very much, Nipper. And we'll be back here in the locker room in just a moment. I've got a secret return right after these words. What is your name, sir? Joe Winicky. Joe Winicky. And you're from where, Joe? Noga Park, California. Panel, Mr. Winicky's secret concerns something unusual about this chicken. 
it's dead. <laughs> no, I just said that. Uh, it's not at all. She'll see, whisper your secret to me, and we'll let the world in on it, if you would, please. Well, that's not exactly a secret. There must be a little more to it than that, is there? Oh. the questions on this peculiar secret with Pat Carroll. Uh, Joe, the, the, it, this has something to do with something the chicken has done. Yes. Are you training the chicken for something that is not usual for chicken to do? No, I'm not training it anyway. If oh. he could train it to do that, he'd be the greatest trainer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way you're holding that chicken reminds me of, like, falconing. Uh, well, know, this is... they, do you let the chicken fly out and deliver messages? No, actually, somebody? this is the proper way to hold a bird. Well, isn't that funny? I never knew that. <laughs> well, I certainly have to talk to my oven. butcher about that. Um, does, see, um, okay, I guess it's one down and three to go. Artie? Um, does he play basketball with seals? <laughs> no. I, just, I figure I'll keep trying my luck. Why not? Um, is, there, is there something to do with the breeding of this particular rooster? No. Uh -uh. No? It, it has nothing to do with the breeding principles or any of that? No. Uh, There's a remote connection in one sense, but I don't think it's what you're getting is, at. Is, uh, does the animal have the run of your home? Yes, he does. <laughs> Not of my home, my yard. Anyway. <laughs> my yard. Yeah. Dude, town, what a Too weird question. Chicken. So what's Anita? chicken? <laughs> is that a lady chicken? Um, is a chicken a chicken a lady anyway? It's, it's, well, actually they have both organs. You're kidding. Birds do, yes, they do. They do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one I thinks didn't... he's a duck. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Sunrise Semester. Roosters yeah. too, though. Don't you have, to have, you have to have roosters, too? Oh, yeah. Well, one organ's dominant, of course, and one's uh, <coughs> subdominant. Oh, well, I won't get into that. Get into music. Um, <laughs> listen, this, this, does, it, does this chicken lay eggs? Yes. Did it have something to do with her laying some sort of special egg? Yes. Was Not a special egg, a egg. A egg. Was mm -hmm. it a rather unusually, was it a large egg or something? No, it has nothing to do with the size of egg it was. Nothing Three to do with the size. Richard Dawson? Joe, was it a square egg? <laughs> no. It's got a chicken so quiet now. Just from the expression of that chicken, it looks as though it could be. Uh, now, I, in the beginning, I thought we established that it was a rooster of some kind. No, no. no. Well, you, you've just about got it, panel, and we've just about run out of time. The fact is that this is a rooster, and somehow or other, occasionally it lays an egg. Nobody knows how or why. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Winnicky. Thank you, Thank you, Chicken. Thank you very much. Thank you.